In 2006, I experienced a life-changing event. That was the year that my daughter Eve was born. Here she is, two days old, having just had her first vaccination. Now, for me, the most amazing thing about becoming a parent has been rediscovering my childhood love of Lego. I'd forgotten how awesome this toy is. My brother and I used to spend hours and hours building like the hugest towers we could, spaceships, rockets, castles, whatever we could imagine. I'd also forgotten how much I loved the little yellow people that inhabited the Lego world. They're called minifigs, and they had this beautiful little smile and completely interchangeable outfits. Now, Eve is eight, and it turns out that Lego is a really different thing nowadays. Just take a look at a couple of these minifigures. The little face, the smiley face is gone, and they've now got facial hair and eyelashes and lipstick. So what happened to Lego while I was off growing up and having babies? <laughs> so this chart shows the number of minifig heads that have been introduced by Lego each year from when they started with that little smiley face in 1978 up to the year 2000. Around about the 19, late 1980s is when they started to introduce these facial figures like moustaches and beards and things. And so up to the year 2000, they had released 160 different heads. Now, also in the late 1980s is when Lego really changed the way that they marketed their toy. They went from being a toy that they marketed to both boys and girls to being one that was almost exclusively marketed to boys. And this is reflected in those little heads. So just 18 of those 160 have got feminine characteristics. Now, the minifigs have become hugely popular. This chart just shows the number of new heads that have been introduced every year since the year 2000. And they've gone from about 20 a year to over 200 in 2013. So the question is, how gender diverse is the LEGO universe nowadays? Now, Eve and I wanted to find this out, and so what we did was we looked through our 2015 catalogue, landed on our doorstep, and we counted the number of feminine and masculine minifigs on every page. This chart shows the percentage of feminine minifigs for the different ranges. And while it differs from range to range, it's about 20% of the feminine, so about one in five. Now, Lego have been widely criticized for this kind of gender gap. And so in 2012, their solution was to come up with the Lego Friends range. Now, it's set in a place called Heart Lake City, and about nine out of 10 of the characters are feminine. Now, I'm imagining Lego thought that people like me would be jumping up and down for joy at Lego Friends, but we're not because Lego Friends sucks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the thing I hate most about it is that the little beautiful yellow minifig, that iconic minifig, has been completely redesigned. It's now more doll-like. It's taller, skinnier, bigger eyes and a little button nose. And those amazing interchangeable outfits have gone. They're now just little shorts and skirts and T-shirts. And the weird thing is, is that the hands can't move. Now, what this means for those poor little Lego minifigs is they can't ride a bicycle in the Lego world. <laughs> but it's OK, they can still brush their hair. <laughs> With the introduction of Lego Friends, what LEGO have done is they have created two worlds in their universe. We've got a boy's world, which is populated with superheroes and secret agents and cops and robbers, a life of adventure. And then on the other hand, we've got LEGO Friends, the girl's world, where there's coffee shops and hair salons and, and cute little t-shirts and shorts. I'm sorry, but this has got to stop. 
Because this kind of gender stereotyping is bad for all of our kids, right? For our boys and girls. Because it limits the kinds of things that they think that they can achieve in life. Here's a little graph of the um, number of women, or percentage of women, in uh, different occupations in New Zealand. It's 2015. And gender stereotyping is one of the reasons why 98 out of 100 of our electricians, bricklayers, and mechanics are men. It's one of the reasons why most of our business leaders and our politicians are men. And it's one of the reasons why 97 out of 100 people who take care of and teach our young children are women. Now, I do not want to live in a world where the kind of genitals you have dictate the kind of career that you should aspire to. I'm sorry. So let's bring this back to Lego. Lego is the most profitable toy company in the world. And if they took a stand against gender stereotyping, it would have a huge impact. Now, the crazy thing is, Lego have had a solution to this, and they've been sat on it for 14 years. So what's the solution? Here it is. Bear with me. In 2011, Lego introduced a whole load of sets to coincide with the release of the Harry Potter movie series. Now, if you don't know what Harry Potter is, it's set in a magical world, and Harry Potter and his friends are school children who are battling a, a really evil wizard called Lord Voldemort. This character up here is Professor Quirrell, one of the children's teachers at school. Spoiler alert. In the first installment of the series, it turns out that the evil wizard Lord Voldemort is hiding under Professor Quirrell's turban on the back of his head. So for the first time, Lego produced a minifigure that had a head with two faces, so that the quiet, unassuming Professor Quirrell could transform into Lord Voldemort in a flash. It's bloody genius, right? It's amazing, what a great idea. These two-faced minifigs became really, really popular, and I've got one that I want to show you. What Lego have used them for is mostly transforming their characters for uh, facial expressions, so being sad or happy or exasperated or angry. I hope that you guys can see this. This is a little Lego scientist. Her experiments are going really well at the moment. She's very happy. But with a quick... Oh, I've just pulled off her legs. Didn't mean to do that, sorry. <laughs> That's how interchangeable they are. With a quick um, flick... Oh, no! She's just dropped her bacterial culture. Evacuate, everybody! It's that easy. Now, these have become so popular that of those 200 new heads introduced in 2013, half of them had these two faces on them. So here's my idea. Instead of giving our minifigs faces that make them angry or happy, why don't Lego give them one feminine face and one masculine face? That one small move will wipe out gender stereotyping like that and it will let our kids decide what they want their minifigures to be. So come on, Lego, do this really simple thing, and then everything will be awesome. Thank you.